Hello and welcome back to 360 Sports on this Tuesday, rainy afternoon, but we're not here to talk about the weather, we're here to talk about sports, specifically college football. Honestly, I'm your host, Moss, alongside Izzy, Chase, and Patrick. You know, we're already a month into the season and so much has already happened. How are you guys feeling? I'm feeling great. I, I think we're entering in some of the best college football that's ever happened. I mean, this 12-team 12, this 12 team playoff really helps us break things open and helps making a so much more exciting season than it used to be. And I'm very happy about what I've seen. Great. And in my opinion, uh, October is like the best month for college football, I believe. All the teams are starting to go into conference play, uh, if they haven't already. And they're playing against their arch rivals. It's, re it's really fun to watch. Yeah, I agree. With the 12-team 12, um, 12 playoff, I feel like that's really like elevating the game. It's kind of like making a lot more things like because now teams are able to lose and they're still able mm. to get into the playoffs so i think that's like fun to watch yeah the big games are starting to come up and especially a big game that was this weekend probably the game of the year so far an instant classic alabama versus georgia you know bama was up 28 at one point and everyone thought the game was over but the bulldogs they were almost able to make the comeback but they fell just short to the crimson tide and got the 41 to 34 win with their 17 year old 2007 ryan williams totaling 177 yards with the game-winning touchdown, making defenders miss to continue his impressive season. What are your thoughts on the game, and is Alabama the championship favorite? So, one, it has been the best game of the season so far. It might be one of the greatest games I've ever seen with my own two eyes. I got a couple things to say about this game. Kalen DeBoer, I was wrong. I went to the season. I thought you weren't the coach. I thought they didn't put you in a situation to win. I think you're a great coach, and not by, like, you can't win games. I just think that Alabama wasn't a fit for you. I thought if you lose two games, that fan base is going to chew you up. I thought you were out of there in two years. I'm eating my words now. He's still a great coach. Do I think they're the national title favorites? No. I still think Ohio State's got a better team. I still think Texas has a better team. And I think Tennessee has been playing better football games. That game it was a little difficult. That second half for Alabama did look very bad. Jalen Milrow didn't look great in that second half. Carson Beck looked terrible in the first half. And they looked, he looked much, much better in the second half. And he was storming down the field at the end of that game. Probably going to win if he didn't throw that interception. I don't think this is the end that we'll see from Georgia. I mean, we saw this back in 2021 where they lose to Alabama in the SEC title game. They went into the national championship and they played each other and Georgia won. So I don't think this is the end. People are saying Ryan Williams is the best wide receiver in college football. I don't buy it. I think Luther Burden and uh, I can't, I'm getting the guy from Ohio State right, right now, but uh, I think they're both better players. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, the first half Alabama looked like they were dominating and then like it kind of was like questioning like how is Georgia, like can they like keep up with this? It was... 28 and 0 in the first 18 minutes with Alabama, which is like crazy. That's four touchdowns up and nothing from the Georgia. But uh, yeah, the second half, I feel like that was one of the best halves in college football in a while. So that was really fun to watch, especially that 75 yard touchdown by 17 year old Ryan Williams um, and the last minute interception. So that, like, that, in my opinion, it secured that Alabama right now should be the championship favorites. And also, like, the Caleb DeBoer talk. I feel like a lot of people were questioning him and saying he was just the replacement for Nick, Sub Nick Saban, um, but he really showed that he could be Alabama's next great coach and he can really like take them far. But also it's just early season, it's early talk, so yeah. And I also think Jalen Milrow showed. He had uh, 30, 375 passing yards and he had four total touchdowns, so I think that's really impressive. So. Yeah, and to kind of pick back piggyback off what you said, um, I think Jalen Milrow is the true leader of this Alabama offense. I think he's the leader of the team. Um, we've, been able, we've been able to see his development throughout the years. Uh, last year, he was great under Nick Saban, and he's uh, thriving under this new offense. I think him and Ryan Williams have a great connection. Um, I wasn't able to see this game personally, but looking at the stat lines, it's just crazy, uh, 177 yards, and he's uh, constantly getting targets. Uh, they really did form a great connection, I think. And I think uh, he should be seriously considered in the Heisman race. I got a question for you guys because we're talking about right now how Kalen DeBoer is this great coach and how Jalen Milrow is still a great player. And I, I'm eating my words because I didn't think they were going to be. They got Tennessee. They're going to Neyland Stadium to yeah. play Tennessee in, what is it, three weeks now. This Josh Heupel, Nico Amalavea team is killing everybody. They just came off a of bye week. They're killing everybody by like 40 points. Do you think they can win that game? Remember, two years ago, they walked in there and they got their butts kicked. That's actually, I had that in my notes for like the later question. But um, yeah, exactly. They kind of had this before. They played like the lower teams and then they were able to, and then they kind of played big teams and they kind of not got humbled, but like they lost. So I don't know. I think they'll definitely have to, Alabama's definitely going to have to learn because also this is kind of still Nick Saban's like team, like his recruits. 
So they'll definitely, I think it will be a challenge, but I think Alabama will win. And I definitely think it's going to be a good game. Uh, I can't clearly say who's going to win right now. I have to see uh, the performance that they put up these next couple of weeks. But um, to add on, I don't think Tennessee's really like struck me. Well, they obviously they've been, they've been playing really good, but they haven't really played anyone too good. Uh, they beat up on Kent State. Played they Oklahoma. Played Oklahoma, but they haven't played Georgia. Alabama beat Georgia um, in a pretty uh, astonishing fashion. Am it, I oh, you no, got, you got I apologize. Guess. Now, my one thing was that is that Georgia did almost come to a loss against Kentucky. It, these games happen. Alabama hasn't looked great in other games this season. They didn't look great against USF. I, I just don't know if they're going to... Kalen DeBoer and Jalen were made for that big moment. They weren't last year. They lost to... What was it last year? Uh, why am I forgetting? Uh, in the they lost to Texas last year. Yeah. They, they, they really couldn't get there. Um, and I just think that Josh Heupel team, and who I think is a fantastic coach, I think they have a great defense, a great defensive line. And this offensive line for Alabama has looked questionable at times. So I just think that's... They're probably going to lose that game. Yeah, and to go off your point of another team that did lose to Kentucky this this uh, weekend was Ole Miss. You know, losing their first game of the season to an unranked Kentucky, twenty to seventeen, and they've got some big games coming up: LSU, Oklahoma, and Georgia. And do you think the Rebels and their fans are going to be scared? And should they be scared that they're going to miss the playoff? Yeah, they they, they absolutely <laughs> should. They, they, they play Georgia. They're going to lose that game. They play LSU. They might lose that game because I think Lane Kiffin is an idiot. He puts Jackson Dart winning the Heisman above everything else, <laughs> and he's just, he's just waiting to take that Florida job because it's coming. I, I could have told you in the beginning of the season that I thought Ole Miss was a good team on paper, but I just didn't think with their schedule that they're going to be able to win this game. I thought they were going to win this game. I didn't think they were going to be a 10-win a, a team. I thought nine, seven wins at best, and they didn't look great because Lane Kiffin just calling plays for Jackson Dart to throw – 400 yards in a game and have 5,000 passing yards this year, and it's just not the strategy to win football games. Yeah, I agree with that, especially LSU. Like, <clears throat> they couldn't even beat Kentucky in their home, like, home field. They have to travel to LSU, and LSU is known for one of, like, the best, like, college atmospheres, so that's, and they're a pretty good team right now, so that's going to be, like, a challenge because they're right next ranked to each other. I think Ole Miss is 12 and LSU is 13, 13. so yeah. they're, like, right next to each other, so that will be a good game, but Again, I don't, I don't like their coach. I, I've never liked him. I've never liked Ole Miss, so maybe. Mm, but I don't think they're going to. I don't know. You, He's never won anything. Yeah, how, I think, how can you like him? Yeah, yeah. with this 12-team playoff, you, can, you have chances to lose, but you can't lose to unranked teams. You know what's going to happen? He's going to backdoor his way in. Yeah. He's going to lose two, two, three games, and he's still going to get in somehow. Yeah. yeah. Um, I definitely think it's time to press the panic button if you're an Ole Miss fan. Uh, not only did you guys, you guys mention LSU, Oklahoma, and Georgia is still to come, but this week they're going to South Carolina's turf, who uh, put up a fight against LSU. They, they almost had that game. Uh, there were some questionable calls in that game. I'm not going to put my word on that, but South Carolina is a very good football team, and they could very easily lose that game too. So that's four potential losses that could be coming up in the span of one or two months. And they looked awesome in the first half of the season, or the first couple weeks. Jackson Dart looks amazing, but... Again, I, I agree with you guys. I don't think the coaching has been great, and I don't think you can lose to Kentucky. You can't lose to an unranked team. Yeah. I mean, LSU still stinks. I mean, Brian Kelly's an idiot. I, I, yeah. He's the same way to Lane Kiffin to me. I, th I just don't think they're great coaches. I think their quality, they, they got put into a good system where they're built to win, like what, the opposite of what I said Kalen DeBoer was going to. And I think I, you'd see the snake in the grass. Lane Kiffin's leaving. It's just it's kind of a disaster right now because they should have been better. They should have beat this team by 40, and they're not, and now they might not make the playoffs. Yeah, and Ole Miss's only games of their opening weeks, I mm -hmm. mean, they scored a lot of points, but against teams that just, like, mm. like they put 76 points against Furman. I mean, Furman's not a football school at all. And they're putting up all these points, but as soon as they see a tough opponent, like, I mean, Kentucky, would you say they're a tough opponent? I mean, they did put up a game against Georgia, but, I mean, Ole Miss, they got to get it together, especially with these coming weeks. Their and defense is bad. Yeah, they, gotta, they just got to they gotta do better. And a team that did do really good, and I'm really happy about this, is Penn State. They, their toughest matchup yet against Illinois, they pulled away and won 21-7. Katron Allen and Nick Singleton combined for 196 rushing yards and two touchdowns, including one of them being thrown by tight end Tyler Warren, which I was very happy to see. And, you know, the Nittany Lions moved to seven in the AP poll, so what do you guys think they should, we should see them going into UCLA? I'm week? always going to talk about bad bad about Penn State. As much as I love him, I think Andy Cotto and Nicky played a terrible game. He didn't let Drew Aller throw the ball in the first half. We could have won that game by so much more. He just didn't let him throw the ball. Defense is stellar. I mean, that's a stalwart defensive I've ever seen. One. It, it's really impressive how they played that game, except for the first drive. Um, 
Illinois shot themselves in the foot a couple of the times. Down the goal line, they had that fumble snap, and then they missed a field goal. They, they should have been able to put up a bigger fight than they were, but um, I'm still impressed with what I saw from the running backs. The offensive line looked a heck of a lot better. So I, it's okay. I think one thing that's definitely a topic of conversation for Penn State especially is the kicker situation. We missed two field goals. And I understand it's can, it can be hard being a field goal kicker. Like, I understand. I always take pity on everybody, so I understand. But big games like that, six points means a lot. Like, if we're playing Ohio State and we're behind three points and we miss two field goals, that, that determines it's the game. That, that's a big deal. So I think that's something they have to sharpen up and fix moving forward, especially when we play teams like USC and Ohio State and even like Wisconsin, Wisconsin. like Definitely. we're gonna we're going ho we're going to their home turf, so we need to know how to like fix our kick kicker situation. Yeah, I'm just gonna add a, uh, on the pick kicker situation. The kicks that he missed, they weren't in like the very high pressure situations. It's one thing lose at the end of the game, miss a kick, uh, you're away. But the kicks that he missed, it wasn't really a high pressure situation. We were up, and um, he just couldn't execute. I could argue on the other side because it, it was a white out in certain senses so I can understand how it was difficult mm -hmm. to kick that how do you guys feel about UCLA next week I think we can't look past them I know we have USC away but like same thing would happen with Bowling Green like we have to stay mentally focused on the week that's ahead like we I understand USC Ohio State those are big games but right now we have to focus on UCLA because they could totally come here and despite whatever ha happened at other games they could totally come here and like just like play better than us so we need to like stay and, like, we need to stay focused and locked in on this week because this could be a trap game where we could lose. But I don't see that happening, but I'm just saying we need to stay focused. So. No, yeah, Good UCLA's man. looked terrible this season, so mm. I'm not particularly worried. But I thought we were going to smoke Bowling Green, and we took that week off, I yeah. guess. So. Yeah. And I know uh, Penn State's had this revamped offense. Uh, we're trying to get – we're trying to get, be more uh, pass, passing team, uh, more aggressive, but – I think they've been doing a good job at sticking to uh, old school Penn State football. They uh, ground and pound. They had 196 rushing yards and two touchdowns. I think that's just a crazy stat. Uh, the defense did look a little bit shaky this past game on the first drive, but other than that, they were stellar. And I think if they can keep up this running game and this stellar defense, they're not going to have many issues against uh, teams like UCLA. But uh, I, I do worry about teams like Ohio State and Michigan. I worry. I'm still recovering from the white. I still can't hear it on my right ear. It was Fans were one of the loudest games I've ever been to. Yeah. I, I mean, the Auburn, my freshman year back in 2021, was the loudest game I've ever experienced, but that was loud. It was. For not even a real whiteout. It wasn't. A lot of people were in blue. I do More just kind of disagree with you. I feel like Drew Lore has such a strong arm, and I feel like we should use that. We should take advantage of it, and I think he should sharpen up his passes, passing game. And I think he can become the best QB in the Big Ten like we expected him to be, and like this is the game to do that. Mm -hmm. They're not a great team. This is a game to try those passing like um, plays and try that. Like Obviously still use the rushing because it works for us, but I think we need to start integrating the passing and learning how to do that because I think Drew Lark could be really good at it. 100% agree with you on that. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to move on, and we're five weeks through the college football season, and we all know NFL scouts are looking at these guys a lot, and each of us are going to go to the board, and we're going to give two early prospects that we can't wait to see taken in the draft. Patrick, we're going to start with you. Yeah, sure. So they put up first for me. I got two different guys who would love my team to have. I'm, a, I'm an Eagles fan. My first guy is Luther Burden. I think he's more of that Malik Neighbors type, but I think he's five times better than he is. He's a bigger body. He's a little bit faster. He doesn't run routes quite as good, but this guy's a fantastic player. We saw in overtime two or one week ago where they throw it from the 50-yard line. He catches it, touchdown, game's over. That's how fantastic this player is. I would love to have him on the Eagles. We got two fantastic receivers. Not a big deal. The next guy I especially want. This guy, Benjamin Morrison, is fantastic. He gets shadowed over every single week by Travis Hunter and Will Johnson. People say they're the best two corners in the country. I don't buy it. I think this guy's right in the mix with every single one of them. He's one of the best coverage. Look at the Texas A&M game. Everybody said Mike Elko was going to go in there and beat that team. No, because they couldn't throw the football. Maybe because just because Connor Wagman isn't that good of a quarterback. But this guy's fantastic. They, no team has been able to throw the ball on Notre Dame except for NIU, but they weren't really throwing the ball his way. Everyone just kind of avoids the guy, and that's why I think he's a fantastic prospect. Um, my first, let me see who they put up first. Sorry. Okay, this is a basic one. It's Travis Hunter. Um, he's a two-way prospect, which is like you really don't see that often. It's a rare thing. Um, we have seen some people in the past 
do this, and he will probably have to eventually pick a, um, he will have to pick a position to play that could evaluate his draft stock, but I do think he's a really promising player, and he shows a lot of depth. Like, even if he does do defense, he could eventually work onto that offense and do both. So I think he'd be really good, and I'm excited to see where he goes in the draft. And my next one, this is a little bit biased, but it's Abdul Carter for Penn State. And even though he's a junior, I can very well see him going into the 2025 draft. And I just think there has been another 11 player who went from linebacker to edge rusher, and that was Micah Parsons, and we can see how well he does. And he's doing this right now. Um, he's doing this right now. He's kind of switching from linebacker to edge rusher. So I'm really excited to see where he goes, and I really... As a Penn State fan, I'm hoping for the best for him. Have you seen the Heisman talks around Travis Hunter? I have. I don't understand it. I'm going to be honest. I don't think they win more than six games. I don't think you give a Heisman to a no. six winning game. All right. Uh, time for my play. picks. Okay, so first off, Tyler Warren. Uh, there's no surprise that the NFL has had a bit of a uh, – Titans have been struggling – tight ends have been struggling lately. There's no doubt about that. Um, Tyler Warren provides you – he's a big body. He can go out and catch balls. And also, he's a threat under, under center. We've seen him line up under center quite a few times this season. He's a dual threat. You can do anything with him. I think uh, NFL coaches will have a fun time scheming around him with their playbooks. And um, he's kind of this next generation of tight ends we're seeing enter the NFL. Now that players like Mark Andrews, Travis Kelsey, George Kittle, they're getting older. I won't say they're all washed, but they're definitely getting older. So uh, it's time for the new generation to come in. Okay, uh, Will Johnson, definitely uh, uh, someone to watch. Uh, Michigan cornerback, he's just been awesome this season. He is dealing with a minor injury right now. I don't think that should affect his draft stock too much. He's already had two pick sixes this season, and I think uh, he could definitely play a big part on any team's defense uh, in the NFL. He, he's just awesome. I think uh, his man-to-man -man coverage has been stellar so far against USC. Um, I know they haven't played too many people, uh, too many good games, but I think he's been a very stellar defender. All right, so we're going to start off with my picks, and we're going to start off with my sleeper, Donovan Ezeraku. I mean, BC, he leads the, the college football in sacks with eight. I mean, he's coming off of not a good year. He had only two sacks last year, and his top year with sacks is seven and a half, so he already has more sacks than he's ever had, and he leads college football. And the game that he had against Western Kentucky was outstanding. He sacked their quarterback multiple times. He had three sacks, most sacks he's had all year in a game, and he had a forced fumble that would eventually lead to BC in the red zone, going on to win the game, and he just pretty much won the game for them. He got so many turnovers on the, on the quarterback. And my next pick, I mean, this guy, how can you not love this guy? Ashton Genty. I mean, he's a junior, but he's just act, he's like a 10-year NFL pro in college right now. And he leads the lead, he leads college with 13 with touchdowns he has all rushing touchdowns obviously but I mean he has over 10 yards per rushing attempt I mean he runs like so fast like nobody catches him and I mean he almost got them the win against Oregon you know they don't, that's their only loss of the year and I mean could he win the Heisman I mean I wouldn't be shocked I mean it usually is a quarterback but I mean if he continues to do this he continues to just lead the league and pretty much everything in Russia in terms of running backs. I mean, I think he has a case. Did you watch that game on Saturday? Yeah. After I did. the Georgia game? Yeah. He had a run in the fourth quarter where my jaw hit the floor. Like I couldn't he had eight guys on him. He got through him, spun a dude out, and got a forty yard break for a touchdown. I don't think I've ever seen a running back <laughs> more impressive than what I see Ashton Jansen do on a weekly basis. He has a Heisman moment every single game. So since college football twenty five is Still really popular, and we're getting roster updates every week. We're going to try and guess these player ratings. So let's just get it into it. Cam Ward. Mm -hmm. I mean, probably going into the year, he probably wasn't that. He was, he was very underrated. Underrated. No, I, knew he was yeah. a I knew he was top 10 and heading into the year, but I think he's like a, I'd say a 94, 95 right now. Yeah, I'd, I'd say 94. I mean, there's an argument yeah. to make that he's the best quarterback in the country right now. I feel I like, I feel it, like they're going to go a little harsh on 93. 93? Okay. I'll go 94. I think 94 is safe. Uh, 89. 89? Wow, that's that is a little disrespectful. disrespectful. That's even more harsh than I thought. I mean, but it, Plus, the game's not that great, I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. Ryan Williams. Okay. Is he even in the game? Is this going into the year? Because 
If yeah. so, he's probably like a 75 yeah. going into the year. But if it's right now, I'd give him an 86. If Cam Ward's an 89? Yeah. yeah. If Cam Ward's an 89, then yeah. I don't know. I'd say 85, 86 yeah. range. Uh, he is still uh, very young. Yeah. He's a true freshman. Watch so. him give him like an 82. 81. 81. Okay. Even lower than 82. This is rankings aren't great. Arch Manning. I love Arch Manning. He's been playing so much better yeah. than I thought he was. As impressive he was as he's been, to. though, I don't think that uh, EA is going to give him yeah. the benefit of the doubt here. I, I, think. M- I might disagree they, with you yeah. because Wait, he got in like, right at the end for a big pocket yeah. of cash from EA because yeah. he wasn't so, going to go into the game. Yeah. So I think they probably gave him a good Everything's all about money, boost. so he probably has he's, a lot. He's probably right around the Cam Ward thing yeah. just yeah. because yeah. of the name value. Just exactly. So I'd say 87. I'll go 88. I'm going with 85. I'm going to go 89. 87. 87. Okay, you hit. I love this guy. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's so talented. Yeah. He's a sophomore. Everybody's talking about that other two freshmen. He's a sophomore. Yeah. He's yeah. doing things Very like that. Young. I mean, I'll go. I mean, I feel like they're not going to rate him as high, especially as Arch Manning, because, I mean, the name. I'll go 85. Anyway. No, he has been putting up crazy stats all season because they've just been blowing out every single team. <laughs> So I, I'm probably going to go, I like an 85 or an 84. I'm probably going to lean closer to an 84 just because of the stats. He's, they're, they're not all there. He, ha, he has a 300-yard a game, but that's um, not all that. Yeah, I'll throw an 86 uh, just because of how good his stats, is, his stats have been so far this season. Um, obviously, I haven't played anyone really good, but uh, good stats equals a good rating. Um, I'm just going to say 83. I don't really play this game, so I don't know how the <laughs> rankings really work. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. It's not, you don't got to worry about it. It's not that great. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, it's a weird game to play. Okay. <laughs> Ratings aren't usually good anyways. 87. Okay. Yeah, good for him. He yeah. should deserve it. He's a great quarterback. It's like six for six. Oh, okay. Very good. Definitely one of the best receivers right mm-hmm. now. Yeah, but he's not even the best receiver on his team. Yeah, that makes it hard. But I, it, yeah. going into the season, you're supposed to be their number one. I give him like a number, ah, 84. I think it's safer. I'm not gonna, I'll go 82. I'm going to go 85. I'll go 84, too. 93. 93? Okay. Is this updated, or is it like the beginning of the there's season? There's no way. This is like, I guess this um, has to be the beginning of the season, because there's no way they're going to put up a yeah. Ryan Williams. It's not really based off yeah. stats, though. Um, it's a little bit uh, biased off of what they think their skill, like how good their skills are. So. He's a first-round pick. Really, yeah, he's, he's a first-round pick. He's, he's very, very talented. He's very athletic. So. This is current day rankings. This is current day rankings, and they still have an I3. He has one 100-yard game. That's crazy. <laughs> and Ryan Williams is that low, too? Yeah, yeah I'm, right. Yeah, he's 17, so I mean, but, that's fair. It's whatever. EA, EA, a bunch of morons. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> right. Well, I think that's the last, and we're going to go to... Uh, so we can't have a college triple show without talking about the best of the best, and mm-hmm. there's a bunch of teams that are still undefeated, haven't lost. There's 19 of them, and we're just going to go over which teams have impressed, and do we think any of them are going to finish undefeated? For me, I have a couple. I have, I have two that I really like right now, and that's Navy and Army. These teams mm-hmm. keep winning out. I, th- I forget which one it is. Navy or Army has the longest winning streak in the country going back from last season. The Navy could go into the American Conference and win their conference game and then go into the Army Navy game, and both teams could be undefeated. That's never happened, so mm-hmm. that'd be really fun to watch. But the team I'm going to talk about is Windyanda. I love Kurt Signetti. I liked him at Alabama. I liked him at NC State. I really liked him at James Madison, and he keeps winning at Indiana. This guy just has to win, and he's one of the best recruiters in the country. They've impressed over and over and over again this season, Where, and they also don't play a ranked opponent till Michigan in late October. So they could walk away from the season with only two losses because then they play Ohio State after that. But they play Nebraska next week. It's an easy win game for them. They play Mich- Michigan State. That's a winnable game. They play Purdue. These are all winning, winnable games for a program that we haven't seen be very good in a four or five years now. So I, I'm really impressed by how they played. Um, I'm impressed um, by Texas. I know they're ranked high, but the fact that they were still able to dominate with their second string quarterback, Arch Manning, after losing their um, QB, Quinn Ewers, who had a lot of talks about becoming a Heisman. And for a lot of teams, losing your like star quarterback is crazy. But they did have Arch Manning as their second, so it kind of makes sense. But I can agree with you for that, Indiana. They haven't been 5-0 and for the past 57 years, so that's a great story. Like, I couldn't imagine being, like, a uh, student at Alabama. Like, that's probably... I mean, ah, no, Indiana. I couldn't imagine being a student at Indiana. That's probably so fun. But, yeah, Miami's kind of shocked me a little bit, but they have, like, an easy schedule. I think 
everybody thought it would have been like Miami versus FSU, but then mm, FSU is like, mm. but I think their test, their next test is Clemson. I think that will be a really good game because I think Clemson is kind of heating up. Oh, Clemson's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Miami, obviously a great team, but last week they didn't look too hot against. Uh, Virginia, Virginia Tech, Virginia. was it? And a very controversial call, call at the end. So they very, it. It, it. Yeah, no. very well could be uh, have one loss. But anyway, uh, one team that has impressed me has been BYU. They beat Kansas State and Baylor. Um, obviously, BYU had Zach Wilson. They've, had, they've produced talent in the NFL, but they're not a very well-known football school uh, nowadays. Um, to come out, come out of the gate undefeated, very impressive to me. Um, another team that... Hasn't been as surprising to me, but I still think it's impressive considering they're under a new coach is Alabama, as you touched on earlier. Um, they just beat Georgia. They do have a tough schedule ahead. They still have to play LSU, Oklahoma, teams like that. But I, re I do think that they could realistically finish undefeated. And um, it, it'll be interesting. It'll be a test for Jalen Milrow um, to prove, prove all his haters wrong, especially after last year, the loss to Michigan. But they've had a great season so far, and I've been happy with the product they put out. I do like BYU. Those Mormons play good football. <laughs> Jack Renslap is great. Their defense is great. It's their fun football team. And how about UNLV? What's going on over there? I mean, nobody knows. I mean, they had two players just leave. <laughs> they just left, yeah. But, um, I mean, I'm going to keep it short and sweet on my last team. Um, I'm a little bit biased because I do know a player on the team. I'm going to have to go with the Rutgers. 4-0 uh, uh, since over a decade. Um, Love their coach. Yeah, he's a great coach. Manungai, the running back, he's very, very good. Uh, and their O-line has been unbelievable. I don't even think they've given up a sack, if not only like one or two. But, I mean, will they go undefeated the whole season? Probably not. I mean, they don't play a lot of the big teams in the Big Ten. Very easy schedule. But, I mean, I think they could definitely finish the season with a very solid record. Yeah. But that is all we have for today. Uh, tune in tomorrow for our baseball show. Postseason just started. I'm very excited to be watching October baseball finally. Go Phillies. Go Phils. Go Yankees. Go Phils. Uh, but that's all we're going to do it. I'm your host, Moss, here with Patrick, Chase, and Izzy. Have a good one.